السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله خالق الوجود من العدم وجاعل النور من الظلم ومخرج الصبر من الألم فملق التوبة على الندم فنشكره على المصائب كما نشكره على النعم ونصلي على رسوله الأكرم للشرف الأشم والنور الأتم والكتاب المحكم وكما للنبيين والخاتم سيد ولد آدم الذي بشر به عيسى بن مريم ودعا لبعثته إبراهيم عليه السلام حين كان يرفع قواعد بيت الله المحرم فصلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أتباعه خير الأمم الذين بارك الله بهم كافة الناس العرب منهم والعجم قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد خلقنا الإنسان في كبد صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله آمين يا رب العالمين ثم ما بعد um, As I was mentioned um, the topic I'm speaking about is how we face stress and anxiety and depression and how we have the strength to deal with those through getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is what tazkiyah is and this is something I've you know had the opportunity to reflect on and look into and research for the past year um, you know as part of my training in med school this is a topic I got interested in because we don't talk about this in South Asian Muslim culture enough so that's why I chose to talk about this. So if I come off abrasive, if I come off blunt, it's because it's something I'm really passionate about. I just wanted to say that. And before I talk about how we deal with stress and anxiety and depression, it's important to lay a framework. Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ For sure, certainly we have placed human beings in kabad. In kabad, in kabad means toil, stress, hardship, difficulty. You know, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim, muttaqi or not, Whatever level of iman you have, you face stress. In لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ You will face difficulty. You know, we have, because of social media, we have this notion that there are celebrities out there or there are family members out there who don't have, who have the perfect life. You know, they don't deal with any stress. They don't deal with any problems. You know, we, we spend so much time scrolling through Instagram and TikTok. And we, you know, we, we, we want to have those lives that those people have because it seems so perfect. Dude, Instagram isn't real. TikTok's not real. Snapchat's not real. Those people take pictures and put them up as they are an illusion. And those illusions have corrupted our understanding. Every single human being goes through stress. And subhanAllah, what do we learn in Islam about what it is to be in stress? What is stress? What is a test? What is difficulty? You know, I had the opportunity in college to study comparative religion. There's a huge difference in how other religions see stress and how Muslims see stress. In Christianity, for example, the notion is, the theology is, Jesus died for your sins, so therefore no one has to deal with any stress. If God loves you, and you've come, if you've uh, got, given yourself to Jesus, you won't have any stress. Because all the stress, Jesus took care of it when he died. So if you're having a stressful life, it is a sign that Allah, does not, that Allah is unhappy with you. And subhanAllah, it is almost the opposite in Islam. Who did Allah love the most? Al-Anbiya. And who were tested the most? Al-Anbiya. So it seems that the more Allah loves you, the more He puts you through tests. That's why this, this, uh, the scholars call this world Darul Ibtila, the abode, the home of tests, the home of difficulty. And we are taught that when we are being tested, it is in fact a way for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah loves us so much, He gives us a mechanism, He gives us a way, because we know, you and I know that our a'mal are never going to be good enough. You and I know that our a'mal are always lacking. You and I know that our a'mal are not going to get us where Allah might want us to get. So He gives us this extra credit. He gives us this VIP elevator that can take us straight, closer to Him if we have sabr through these tests, if we have sabr through these, these, these stresses that, that come in our life. And we have all sorts of different stresses. Everyone has different stress. And when we, when we experience this stress, what does Allah promise us? لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. No one is tested more than they can bear. If Allah has given you a test, He knows you have the ability to pass it. He knows you have the ability to get through it. He knows you have the ability to use it to get closer to Him. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. And He gives us these tests as a way for us to get closer to Him. And when He does, we experience all sorts of different 
all sorts of different tests, different levels. Everyone's at a different level, but everyone is being tested. I might being test, be, be tested in a different way than you. You might be being in a different test that I could never handle. But my tests I can handle because Allah has designed them for me. So this is how we approach tests. Not as a punishment, but as a means to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes those tests are such that they cause pain, they cause difficulty, and they cause us to feel emotions like anxiety and depression. And these are normal emotions. Allah put them in us. It's okay to feel them. But today we have two extremes. Today we have one extreme where any little thing happens, oh, I'm depressed, oh, I'm anxious, oh, I, you know, I, I, I ha I'm having, you know, leave me alone. I don't want to talk to anyone. Every little thing. That's not depression. I have experienced depression. I've spent six weeks in a psych ward. I know, I, I know what depression looks like. I'm not showing off. This is experience. When you see it, when you experience it, you learn what it is. And on the other hand, we have the notion that depression isn't real. Like as if, if you have Iman, Iman is like some sort of antacid tablet that's going to dissolve your stress and make all your negative emotions go away. This is also not true. We experience depression. We experience difficult feelings. The Prophet ﷺ experienced difficulty. He experienced pain for worldly things. When, the, when his wife, his beloved wife Khadija عنها, died, he was so sad. This, this year, the year he, she passed was called Am al Huzn, the year of grief, the year of sorrow. And the Sahaba say that we did not see the Prophet ﷺ smile for an entire year after she died. The same Muhammad ﷺ who Anas bin Malik in Medina, Anas bin Malik knew the Prophet in Medina, he tells us, I never saw anyone smile more than the Prophet This is the same Muhammad who is not smiling for a whole year after his wife passed away. The grief is there. The feelings are there and that's okay. They can be there. When the Prophet had seven children, he was blessed with seven children and he had to bury six of them with his own hands. They were all stages of life. Some were children, babies. Others were old, grown up, married, had their own children. And they died and he had to bury them as well. Six, seven children, he buried six of them with his own hands. And one, and one of the narrations is, he's hold, one of his sons, his, one of his final children, Ibrahim alayhi salam. He's sitting with him, with his son, in the masjid, two years old. He's holding him. And, he's, he's, and Ibrahim is breathing his last. And the Prophet sallallahu is crying. And the Sahaba, you know, they didn't used to see him cry. They asked him, Awatabki, Ya Rasulullah, you also cry? And he said, Naam. Al Buka'u Rahmatun. He said, crying is a mercy from Allah. So it is okay to feel these feelings because the Prophet ﷺ felt them. And you know, Wallahu alam why if we ask as a society turn away from depression, I can give my own you know, two cents. Again, this is all building up towards how we part, how we de how we use Tazkiyah to deal with our emotions. Like I said, the Christian idea was depression. If you're, if, you're, if you're having a hard time, Allah doesn't love you. And of course, there are all these people who are suffering. So psychiatry came as a field, developed as a field to give something to those people and developed as a secular field, uh, something Western, something not religion, that, that the religion doesn't have anything to do with, something, that will, something that's completely mental, so it's completely cerebral, something intellectual. There's no religion involved. And because it came as something anti-Christian, anti-religion, and Islam came looped into that as well. But subhanAllah, the amazing thing is, psychiatry <coughs> is actually a Muslim invention. The field of psychology is a Muslim study. The first people to write about depression, psychiatry, was actually a Muslim scholar by the name of Zayd al-Balqi in the 9th century. Western academics won't tell you this. This is something that research, Muslims have done research on. Bimaristans, hospitals, in the uh, um, Abbasid and Uthmani caliphates, those hospitals had psych wards. And the treatment in those psych wards was actually to learn Quran. And then basically, and going back to Zayd al balqi he wrote a book. And he called these diseases, like anxiety, depression, all these diseases, he called them diseases of the soul. Which is why I'm talking about them in a tazkiyah context. They're diseases of the soul. When those emotions get overwhelming, when you don't know how to deal with them, they put you in depression, they put you in anxiety. And we have the Qur'an as a means to prevent that from happening. And if it does happen, as a medication, so that it doesn't happen. So psychiatry is actually a Muslim field. 
studying these emotions and how to control them is actually a Muslim field. Because the mainstay of treatment in psychiatry, again, this is some of my medical background talking, is, that, is there, there are medications that exist, there are chemicals that happen in your brain, but the main treatment is actually something called cognitive behavioral therapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy. What is cognitive behavioral therapy? This is talking to someone, changing your thought patterns, changing the way you think, changing the way you see the world, changing the way you have a relationship with those around you and yourself and everything that exists around you. You know what the Muslim version of cognitive behavioral therapy is? Tazkiyah. What we're here for today. That treatment is something we have been doing for 1400 years. I'll give you just one example. I had, I had 10 minutes. I asked for 15 and I'm coming into the end so I'm going to finish up soon. I'll just give one example of how we use Tazkiya as cognitive behavioral therapy. One of the symptoms of depression is guilt, worthlessness. I don't matter. No one cares about me. My life is worthless. Everything is meaningless. There's nothing worth it. Everything is, you know, out of my control. I don't have anything. Um, you know, my life isn't worth it. I, everything, I do, everything I do goes bad. All these feelings of, I'm not worth it. And that gets to the point where a person becomes okay with taking their own life. I don't matter. Who does it care? Who, who cares if I live or die? I'm just going to go commit suicide. And you know, another thing, just a side point, you know, we, we, we know, we, we understand that suicide is haram, and we condemn it, and we, do, we say that we, we recognize that suicide is haram, but when it comes to that person who is committing, who is thinking about it, instead of villainizing them, we should think about where they came from, what happened in their life that led them to this, to, to led them to this. It's not easy to think about committing suicide, so we should try to address the root cause instead of judging people. Khair. They come to the point where they're ready to commit suicide. And then cognitive behavioral therapy, they'll go into treatment and they'll, they'll learn that you matter. Your life is actually worth it. There are people who care about you. There's meaning in your life. There's purpose in your life. There are things you can do in your life. People love you. They say that now. 1400 years ago, my Rabb told me in Surah Bani Israel, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." No doubt, for certain, we have honored every single child of Adam. What does that do for you? It's not just about making the noises and making the sounds and moving on, reading it and moving on. What does that do when you internalize that? When you, have, when you go through a tazkiyah you know, exercise and internalize what this means to you, no matter who disrespects me, no matter who dishonors me, no matter who makes me feel worthless, Allah has honored me. Allah has given me karam. Allah has given me respect. And this is not just Muslim, non-Muslim, anyone, Bani Adam, every single child of Adam. What does that do for you? When you internalize that, anyone can do whatever they want. You can feel as out of control as you want. You can feel as miserable as you want, but know from other people. But know that Allah has given you something that no one else can. The master of the skies and the heavens has honored you. And his honor compare, is limitless compared to anyone else's honor. When you internalize that, will you ever ever feel worthless when the master of everything has given you worth. That is what happens when we have tazkiyah exercises and we internalize what Allah is saying to us. So may Allah give us the ability for those of us who are struggling, for those of us who are experiencing these emotions, may He give us the ability to connect with His word. May He give us the ability to continue to do tazkiyah so we can heal our emotions, so we can connect with Allah, so we can find comfort in Allah for our emotional problems, for our challenges in this world. And for those of us who aren't struggling, but might know someone who's struggling, you know, um, Allah says, هُوَ الَّذِي أَيَّدَكَ بِنَصْرِهِ وَبِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ He is the, Allah is the one who helps people either by himself or through his fellow believers. So for those of us who might know someone who's struggling, let's not judge them. Be kind to them. Be courteous to them. Don't tell them, oh, you don't have enough sabr. You don't have enough iman. That's why you're going through this. Allah told the Prophet ﷺ, Wa aqad na'lamu annaka yadiqu sadruka bima yaqulun. Ya Rasulullah, we know you are, your chest is hurting. There is pressure. There is pain. There is difficulty. There is hurt inside your chest. Bima yaqulun. Out of what, those pe of what people are saying about you. A worldly thing is bothering him. He's feeling bad about it. He's feeling anxious about it. He's feeling depressed about it. And Allah said, Ya Rasulullah, we know that's okay. 
we will give you the comfort and the strength and the ability to get through it. So may Allah give us the ability, for, to, if we know someone who is struggling, to be that support, to be that solace, to be that comfort, to be that person who won't say, you don't have enough sabr, you need to be, be a better Muslim, who will instead say, we know it hurts, we know, let us help you, let us be those who say, وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah give us all relief from this affliction of depression and anxiety and may He make us support for those of us who are for our friends and family who are suffering. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Aqulu qawli hadha fa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimina fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.